us back in for the second round is a sex work activist who is working with Shift Calgary to produce a safer guide to escorting. They own their own perfuming business, Evocative Perfume, and volunteer part-time with HIVCL. Please welcome Kat Thomas. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. Okay, so first things first, I've included a content note. My presentation includes topics of white supremacy, cisgender supremacy, rape, patriarchal violence, capitalist violence, and I understand that those topics can be upsetting. So with that in mind, I will tread carefully. So, from Arrested Development, <laughs> I'll drop you off alive, hooker or no. It's hilarious, right? It's humorous because the assumption is that a hooker or a sex worker would not be dropped off alive unless the person dropping them off is exceptional. The default interaction is then assumed to be base violence. From Brooklyn Nine-Nine, sex work the butt of every sitcom. What we joke about indicates what we consider normal, what we consider acceptable, the stories we tell ourselves, and the stories we tell each other help us understand our world and our place in it. Here are some of the harmful jokes that I've seen being made about sex workers. <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. Comes the harmful misconception that sex workers are diseased or spread STIs. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Since it is a job, we're often more protected than regular folk against infection and pressured into unprotected sex, often against our own wishes. So from friends comes a joke where sex workers are uneducated. Seeing all these stigmas sex workers face illustrates how difficult their job actually is. Not only must we protect ourselves mentally, emotionally, and physically from potentially violent clients, you also have to protect yourself from the violent societal tropes regarding your profession. Brooklyn Nine-Nine again. Sex workers are criminals. The stigma is particularly damaging as it vilifies and criminalizes sex work rather than normalizing it. More often than not, sex workers will actually face clients who steal from them, or clients that will refuse payment after service is rendered. From Lucifer, sex work isn't a legitimate profession. This is the culmination of all the other stigmas. Sex work isn't seen as a job, and instead it is treated as shameful, desperate, and a last resort. Many escorts and strippers are actually highly trained and very skilled. If you've ever tried to pole dance, you would probably know that. Arrested development again. These jokes normalize misconceptions about sex work and cement them as truth in our collective consciousness. Society considers sex workers diseased, stupid criminals that deserve the violence that comes to them rather than the talented, dynamic, responsible, professional human beings they are. So when I use the phrase sex work, I refer to the exchange of sex for money. The government of Canada uses the term prostitution when discussing sex work which is actually a term most people in the sex industry find rather judgmental and outdated. So, now I'm going to provide this continuum for sexual exchange. Sex workers are not the only people engaging in sexual exchanges. Any person engaging in sexual activity will fall somewhere on the spectrum, going all the way from the far right side, um, rape and sexual slavery, to the far left side, sex for pleasure. So let's do sex for pleasure. It's the farthest left we can go on the spectrum, and it's the type of sexual exchange that is both consensual and free from outer pressure to act. Healthy, communicative, and non-coercive sex acts that involve no exchange of money or power as a means of making a living. BDSM relationships are also included in this category. Sex work. <laughs> it's the, the exchange of sex for money, and key examples of this can be strippers, Alt models, cam boys, cam stars, cam girls, table dancers, escorts, porn stars. Choices on the table, and the sex worker has control and influence in the exchange. Survival sex work isn't listed on the continuum, but it needs to be acknowledged because it's different than regular sex work. It happens on the street level, and personal choice is reduced. And you might have to end up engaging with clients that are not as enjoyable, or you might have to work for an abusive employer. In, a, in obligatory sexual exchange, sex becomes a bargaining chip. The dominant narratives of marriage and domestic space become a point of transaction. 
This type of sex can be experienced within a normal, non-abusive relationship or an abusive one. Sex acts maintain the relationship and access to resources. We end the continuum at rape and sexual slavery. Consent is completely removed from the exchange, and because both of these involve non-consensual sex and are theft rather than an exchange, they're a topic that's relevant to my presentation, but they're not the topic I'm going to discuss at length today. So, what are our jokes actually about? Consent and who harms sex workers and misconceptions of sex work are pretty problematic, and humor can help us deal with those stressors and with that trauma. Our society is pretty messed up about sexual exchanges in general, and there's a lot of grief and trauma. When we're in the media, and it's not a joke, Forensic Files, Law & Order SVU, these are narratives of sex workers inevitably facing and choosing violence. In the Forensic Files, a, f a sister of a, ma a murdered dancer says everyone knows that strippers will end up meeting a violent end. Violence does not have to be part of this job. But the media portrayals refuse to make safe sex work imaginable or part of our collective consciousness. Safe sex work can be safe and fulfilling, but these shows don't give that reality a platform. The type of media also casts clients in an undesirable way as well. And so we are shown as exploited, abused, and degraded. And the writers in this show left no room for sex workers to have any agency and control. They're merely seen as powerless and victims, and they're the subject of our pity. I'll leave you with this slide. Sex work is manual labor, just like a bike courier or a construction worker. Karl Marx himself can be credited in coining the phrase sex work. And humor can be an empowering tool we can use to engage with difficult topics. So I'll leave you with Kimmy Schmidt. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.